Warning. 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 The Freestyle Club contains adult language. It is intended for mature audiences. Listener discretion is advised. Hello and welcome. Welcome to the third edition of the Freestyle Club. This week, da, 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 da. we are now the Freestyle Chubs. And, <laughs> and here's the reason why. Joining me, of course, my co host, the unknown admin, Rafael Reyes. What's Yay! good, you bastard? <laughs> And if you can hear him in the background, is the man who is in charge of the 350 Club, the president and CEO, <laughs> Artie Rodriguez, producer, singer, extraordinaire. How are you, sir? I'm doing fine. I'm a little heavy, but I'm good. I'm good. Thank you for for that introduction. 350, I baby. I think that Raphael and I combined make a little over 350, but I don't think individually we will satisfy your needs well i would just have to use my imagination tie you guys up with a wrap and let's do it oh man <laughs> thank Hello you so and welcome to the club marty thank you so much <laughs> have a good night talk to you soon okay. <laughs> so Artie, uh, every every week uh, so far in the last three episodes, we've had a topic that we like to discuss. But before that, we like to talk about um, some of the feedback that we've received uh, over the past few episodes. And let me tell you, I've gotten some interesting feedback on the first two episodes. Do you guys want to hear it? Yeah, sure. go for it. Here it goes. The Freestyle Club. 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 Freestyle News. One thing that uh, someone brought up to my attention, um, and I can't mention their name, unfortunately, but was that um, they were listening to the episode where we discussed uh, GoFundMe. And what they wanted to point out was is that Lisa Melendez has already recorded her video. Lisa Melendez has already recorded her song. So what's the $10,000 for? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Can I can I do one of those? I I'm I, I, I'm I'm in dire need of them. Uh, I'm hoping it's more songs and videos. Well, me too. Yeah. But, but that that was uh, that was an interesting point. They discussed how um you know the production probably didn't cost anything, the video didn't cost anything. So where is this ten thousand dollars going? So that was some of oh, the wow. feedback that uh, we received on that specific episode. Oh, you know Ouch. what? Um, since we brought it up, there is a little tidbit that I found out about the Kickstarter versus uh, the whole GoFundMe thing. And we remember we couldn't figure out why people were using GoFundMe instead of Kickstarter. And the reason is because Kickstarter is all in, all out. So if she went with like a ten thousand um, dollar goal within two months, at the end of that two months, if she didn't make the ten thousand, everybody gets their money back and she gets nothing. GoFundMe, let's say she only makes nine thousand, she walks away with that. She walks away with the nine thousand. Well, that, where, where, yeah. Let's put it this way. Anybody who does it walks away with whatever the amount is left. If she couldn't reach it, she, whoever it is can walk away with that amount. Is right. that the rules? Is that what it is? Yeah. Well, yeah. In GoFundMe, whatever she gets, uh, you know, she can collect. But in Kickstarter, if you don't make that go, you get nothing. It's, you know. Okay. Yeah. You, everybody right, gets their money ahead. back. Yeah. So. And so, and so, so what is the question then? Well, there is no question. It was just an observation. And, oh, okay. And the right. fact that um, it's kind of suspect of the fact that, you know, she's still <laughs> she's still raising the money, but the project is done, and so is the video. So, aha. Uh -huh. But what she probably did was put up her own money, and it's just going to recoup it from the GoFundMe. I, I would imagine. I guess we just have to wonder and wait for the proverbial blowback, as we are in freestyle, and it will happen. Are we questioning whether? It, it should have been done or it should not have been done. Okay, so... Is, that what, let, is let, that what we're asking? Well, yeah, the question is, should should we, as freestyle artists, as, as people who are in freestyle, especially someone with her reputation of being a recording artist, she went gold in Japan with Goody Goody, should artists be doing GoFundMe campaigns when GoFundMe 
is synonymous with people who are in need because someone passed away or someone got sick. Uh, she oh, would be she, yeah, she, yeah. She, would, she would be tapping into that. Wow, that's a, that's a good question for me, my personal opinion. I don't think that it should be used for that. I think it should be used for people who, who really, really can use or utilize the public to get some sort of financial help for a little bit of help because, in all honesty, I don't think a lot of people get a lot of money from that anyway. The people who really need it usually don't get a lot of money. And the people who don't need it usually get it. So it's kind of like, it's not really a big help, but for those who really need it, it should be utilized. I believe it should be utilized for that. Like if there's somebody in, in, in dire need and, and they need help, then the GoFundMe should be used. I completely, you know, like I completely agree with, with, with that sentiment. And you know for a fact that every time that anything in freestyle is done, remember back, if, if we go back 10 years or 12 years to fundraisers, remember when we had the fundraisers and we would have these venues where people would come and donate toys or they would donate money or they would raise right. funds for a, right. a, a yep. freestyle artist who's who's ill and, and in their deathbed and then what happens after the money's raised there's some controversy somebody pocketed some money somebody did something iffy and and we're we're just questioning everything and putting it out there on social media i think that i think that one of the points that we need to understand is that whenever you raise money it's legal to um to extract the cost of the venue, uh, the the event, and then the rest goes to charity. A lot of people don't know that you can take out, uh, you can take out your uh, your salary or the people that you're hiring to accomplish the thing, and then by the time it's over, maybe a good seventy to sixty percent go to actual charity. And a lot of people don't understand that part of it, and so a but, lot of people get in freestyle. One hundred percent goes into the freestyle and, and person's that, pocket. That was exactly my point. Is that, I, and I'm not saying just for freestyle. Because I've done, I've done a lot of hip hop stuff, and I've done a lot of uh, uh, stuff in, in other genres, and it always becomes suspect because you don't see it. Now, uh, I do things a little differently. I, I raised money before, and what I do is, um, I do what's called a source of transparency. I don't take anything, and what I do is, at the end of the night, we all count the money. We put it in the envelope, we write exactly the right amount that was sent in, and we give it to the person right there and then in front of the people, and we take pictures, and we take film, and we show it. So that way, people can actually know that it actually went to the person or the thing that it needed to go to. And not a lot of people do that. Yeah, so... No, you know, I can't remember anybody doing that. Exactly. Yeah. What, I, I do that. That's the only way I'm going to do it, if I'm going to raise money. It's, that's the only way I'm going to do it. I don't do them anymore. But if they're gonna if they're gonna have me involved, that's how I would do it. I don't I don't I don't mix I don't mix uh, words. I said, listen, I've got to see the money. I've got to see the money direct. I got to see you counting it. I got to see it put in my hands. I want the right amount filled out, and it's been done before. I've done it in front of people. I've actually showed the envelope. I've showed the amount, and then I give it to the person right there in front of them. So that that way they can see that their money that came in or whatever they they gave goes directly to the person and not to my pocket. Well, I could also recall, you know, back, you know, years back when they had the fundraiser for Wicked Rich. There was a controversy there. The toy drives, they had some controversy there. Um, It's sad. Every time that there was some type of fundraising, there was some kind of controversy. So I know that it will 100% happen with this Lisette Melendez GoFundMe uh, situation. It's freestyle. It's written. Yeah, I mean, listen, uh, she she did what she thinks she needed to do to accomplish her goal, and I got that. I I just believe that it should be used for people who really, really need it. I mean, kudos to her if she got that successful, but we all going to have to answer for what, what we do. It's just that simple. You know, nothing's ever hidden. It's just going to happen. But, um, you know, she reached out and did what she had to do, and that's you know, that that's on her. But I wouldn't give money to that. I would give it to somebody who probably whose parents just passed away or hungry or some. you know what I'm saying? Yes, I do. Ralph? Yeah, I'd, ra- I'd rather do that. Now, honestly, you know, like I said before, it, it everyone's free to do what they want to do. Everyone's free to donate who they want to donate. Right, you know, exactly. 
and let it, you know, whatever happens, happens. You know, it, let the chips fall where they may. You know, if she gets it, good. If she doesn't get it, she's going to get something because she went the GoFundMe way, right? So, right, right. This is the Freestyle Club. <laughs> Topic of the week. Let's talk freestyle. Freestyle. Right now, we're going to move on to the topic of the week. And the topic of the week is uh, social media and promotions. Let's go back in time. Let's go back in time and remember the first time we ever had anything for freestyle on any type of social media. And when we think about that, we think about LaRue and the Freestyle Nation board. And, and Wow. We- yeah. We go all yeah. the way back back to that time. And every iteration of communication that we've had over the past 20 plus years, we've somehow destroyed and we've imploded within. And when I say that, I mean freestyle itself. We've, we've right. imploded. When we were at LaRue's or the Freestyle Nation, we would attack each other. We, we, we had the luxury uh, back then of, of hiding our names and not having all this technology that could track you. Am I correct, Ralph, when I say that? Yeah, uh, this is the thing that gets to me, right? You, you see artists and DJs and fans boohooing and moaning and pissing about the drama, and, right? But they don't remember. I remember the, all the drama that caused Freestyle Nation to close, right? That was the first board for Freestyle, and it closed to what? Yeah, that's the right. Drama. The drama. Yeah, it closed. Yeah, that's right. That's right. It closed because the guy was doing it as a labor of love. It was a, a, a project that he, he got tired. Yeah, he got tired of it. Yeah, And he got tired of, of having to moderate the board, and he just closed it. That That's always been part of us, you know? That's always been part of freestyle. I mean, it's part of any genre, right? Because when I create, when when I created uh, "What You're Missing" with CPR and uh, P. Hernandez, I modeled it not after other freestyle sites, but after So Hip Hop and AllHipHop.com. They had forums too, and that's where I was going with it in that direction. And I would always visit them, and they had listen. The drama was real there. People were getting oh yeah, they got downs. crazy. They yeah, got beat yeah. downs. Yeah, so you know, yeah. You know, for people to go back and forth with words, it, you know, it's silly, but these people would take it to a whole nother level. So when I see, you know, when I hear people talk about drama and freestyle, I'm like, I please, you know. It's really, honestly, when you say that, and I and I work with a lot of genres here, um, and the ego thing is prevalent in every genre. Yep. And so no matter what kind of uh, of of site you build or anything like that, you're always going to get people with egos and, and situations where they're going to fight somebody else because they want to be the it guy for some reason. And, and that's going to always happen. That's always going to be, it's always going to happen. Now that's let me it. ask, that simple. let me ask you guys back then, were we as sensitive back then as we are now? Now we're able to be separated. Now People can just ignore people. It's it's like there's now if we've ever if ever the word circle stood for something, it's for now. There are circles here and there are circles there and there are circles over there. And and each one is the savior of their genre. And I got that and I'm fine with it. But I'm one of those that just stay totally out of it. And I mix with everyone. I say hi to everyone. I love everyone. There are some that I'd rather stay away from, but I usually, I, I'm very serious about that because they have no compassion for life or just being kind to one another. And I just rather stay away from it. I just rather remember the happy memories. I, I think that the, the biggest issue right now in freestyle is trolling. And when I say trolling, and. Yes. Co- so let me explain. Today, I had the honor to interview an 11 year old young lady who um, is going to release her first freestyle song. So I promoted it. I put it on my Facebook page. I I put a tidbit of it. I put her picture on there. And what was the first comment that was posted? At least she sings better than her mother. That was nice. the comment that How was classy. Made. Very classy, okay. right? So, yes. so, you know, I said, you know, ouch. You know, why are you trolling on this particular post where is this young lady who's 11 who's going to be presented for the first time to an audience and who for and the first and she's gonna and she's gonna read that, right? Yes. Exactly. So yeah, the sensitivity level is 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 mute because it, here's what it is. There was a guy once who said something about my wife, and I went to go see him. And he was actually the nicest person I've ever seen because I was really ready to knock his lights out. Because if you're gonna say anything, say it to me, and just inbox me and tell me I'm a jerk off, I'm an asshole. Say it to me, and I would be glad to 
you know, apologize if I've hurt you. And if you deserved it, I'll tell you why. But there's no need to attack anybody else, any other person outside of that. The concentration here is the daughter. And so they should understand that that's an 11 year old. And that's very, very, that's very bad. That person has um, no zest for life, or probably doesn't have anything to really understand that this sensitive part in this young lady is her introduction into what we've been fighting for many years. And hopefully it may be over with by the time she gets out, which I doubt. But so, at least we can be nice. I had to I had to talk to the person as if I was a parent and I was sitting a child down. Allegedly, they're a big time DJ. So I had to put it in their terms. So imagine you're on your page and um, you talk about your son who is 11 years old and they are about to become a DJ. And then the first comment that comes, at least you're better than your father. How would you feel? So I had to put it in that term for them to understand that they had messed up and they ended up deleting their comment. But good, good, you know, good, good. But, but we have that a lot. And, and let me just preface this by saying, I know that I am sarcastic. I know that I do memes. I know that I say things. But when I say things about an individual producer or artist, it's about their work and it's not personal. Now, have I gotten personal? Yes. But there has to be room for growth. And I feel that I have grown in that aspect where at whatyoumissing.com back in the day, and Ralph can attest to this, I was worse than I am now. Yeah, everybody hated us. <laughs> well, I, there's a couple of beneficial things to this, um, uh, to what you have done, CPR. And, and the benefit is this. People started to watch out what they were doing and try to be at least better so that that way they could shut you up. And that's beneficial in my, in my point of view because it actually you know, makes them to understand that not everything that they think is a hit is going to be accepted. And I got that. Um, and so that was kind of beneficial in that point of view, in that aspect. I, I hope you understand what I'm saying. Yes. But I like the way you're doing it now. You're being even more, you're pressing the button more in the soul than you ever were before. And the way that you're doing it now, you're really getting through as opposed to other people just saying, well, you know, he called, he said that I shouldn't be living and doing any kind of song. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that. That's that's a way better situation because not only are you are you being uh, honest in your critique, but you're also helping people if they want to take the help right. to understand that it's not something that's attacking them; it's attacking their uh, their quality of art. Well, behind the scenes, it's gotten worse because uh, for seven to eight months, I've had to deal with people actually trying to get me kicked off the air, uh, 90.7, where I, I've been working for over 20 years. And it's, got, yeah, it's getting to that point where people are knocking on the door now and trying to get me kicked off. And, you know, they accuse me of bullying children. You know, they're doing everything in their power to say these horrible things that I did, which, you know, of course is not true. But um, the thing about social media is, if you put it out there, and if you put it out there enough, that's what you are. If somebody labels you something, you yeah. become that. And that's what happens now. Now is just like just like the news, somebody puts something out there and someone's going to believe it. Yeah, and I, I don't... You're on social media and you're doing something to benefit whatever it is, our, our genre. And there, right now, I have a couple of artists that uh, I can't believe people flying into this little shitty apartment to work with me i can't i can't i can't fathom that but that's <laughs> that's that's been happening lately and so i have artists that i work with and i'm brutally honest with uh when they walk in uh i i'm not i've never professed to being the best but i do understand i do let them understand that i'm not the savior of freestyle and nobody is but you do have to do your very best no matter who you work with it could be a name or it could be a beginner just be the best that you can be. Um, and when you present it, present it with respect, even if the person is either a good person or an asshole. One of the two, you have to go in there and you just have to be honest and be straightforward and just say, I would like for you to play this. Don't mention any names and just go in there and just be proud of what you have. If it doesn't get played, doesn't mean that it's not good. It just means that it's not for that station or that person or that DJ. But the world is huge. 
And a lot of people actually take their time and waste their lives on microcosms. And you have to understand that if you're going to do micromanagement to that level where it's really tiny, that if you don't get on some sort of list or a DJ play, doesn't play your stuff, that it's not good, then you're really not in the music business. You know, and again, and you give these great tidbits of advice, but there's many that don't take it, even when they're in your presence, even when they have used your services, even when... No, uh, no, they don't, they don't. It costs us because social media uh, boosts our ego, and then when these egos that are boosted get hurt because they're so fragile, it becomes a war between whatever is inside that specific person. You... Um, hurt their ego and then it becomes a personal issue and then it escalates to you know trying to get them kicked off the air trying to stop other people from being played on the radio um ralph how many complaints did you get and how many times did people try to get other people in trouble or get them kicked out or banned from the forums i i lost track of all the fake lawsuits that we got <laughs> over the years no i'm being honest i'm not even, it's yeah. not, it's not, it's not even trying to be funny I'm being I, honest I with you. Yes, I can imagine. I, I can't. I can't even count the fake lawsuits that you know we got over the years. You know, or e even admins trying to delete each other off the boards that they own. I mean, it's just uh, I, I can't. Man. I can't. I just can't keep up with that. It's just too many. Yeah, I, I kind of always. I always taught. Uh, look, there are gonna people who are gonna agree. There's people who come in here and they're like, I'm working with so and so, and I'm working with so and so, and this is going to be a hit. And I'm like, okay, first of all, you need to get the word hit out of your head. Second of all, you have to understand that you have to get off your ass and go out and sell stuff. You have to become a salesman. And so I'm very brutally honest with a lot of people who come here. If they don't take it, then it's not to their benefit. They're, they're idiots if they don't take it. It's wrong. If they, they should take it. But I tell them, there's no reason to attack anybody else unless you've been attacked, you know, morally or somebody, you know, said, you know, you don't deserve to exist or something to that effect. Then you can retaliate and just say, sir, I do. But you don't need to cut them off the air or anything like that unless there is a legal thing there of, of abuse. If you can really go ahead and prove it. But I've always told whoever I work with or anybody I work with politeness can go a mile um, and respect can go a mile. If, if they don't play you, it doesn't mean that you're not good. You just need to understand that they're doing what they believe is right and you're doing what you believe is right. And when those two, two things come into agreement, then you have something. But when they don't, there's no need to attack or, or hurt someone. I appreciate the artist that actually takes feedback how long did it take for alex of latin nation to actually get a song played on my show i mean he got one song played back in the day duetas mi vida and then it was like nothing for years um uh, right, uh, right the song that he wrote for his daughter charisma and then we got to fast forward until better than me and uh, another song that he did previous to that you know he had to wait all that time but throughout the entire time i don't think that he's come out of his mouth i don't think he's been disrespectful i think that he's actually grown as an artist in some ways to the point where you know he was undeniable and i had to play some of his songs so kudos to him you know and that's yeah. that's all i ever want out of the out of the artist is for them not to think that just because already produced it i have to play it you know, and that's that's one no, of that's no, one of the that things doesn't... that's one of the yeah. things that have caused freestyle recently. You've produced some some uh, artists that have used your name in bad form. <laughs> oh my so god! I got one particular artist that um and and I shared this with Raphael and Raphael laughed for like twenty minutes. He said the artist said Artie produced it, so he he talked about the song. Send me a link to the iTunes so I can purchase the song. Then he. <laughs> Then he then he wanted me to play it, <laughs> but wait, there's more. But wait, <laughs> so, more. Then, so then he wanted me to play it, and then after he um, he asked me to play it, <laughs> wait for it, wait for it. He wanted me to put him on a top ten countdown, and there's more. No. <laughs> and then he wanted me to book him to perform and pay him. Oh, oh, so wow. all in one stop shopping with CPR. Wow. See, I had first of all, I had no idea that you were working with Fever Records. 
<laughs> the other thing is, um, I, yeah, I, classic. I, clip, clip it, clip it. Uh, I, I, you know, you listen. If if that was said to something like a FEMA Records, which is the uh, the the utmost amazing uh, 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 people who are keeping the freestyle alive, and the cell is an amazing individual, um, he would have said, uh, "Guy, I need to hang up now." He would, <laughs> he, he would he he would have been the most polite individual because I know that he can be polite, but if you're an asshole, he can really tell you a new one. <laughs> but if he would come with that, he would just say, "You know, you need to like." You need to really rethink your 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 strategy. I am um, right. I you're saved being offensive. it. I saved up the the, the uh, message because I think it's one of the greatest examples of what not to do. Not to do. But, yes. But but wait, there's more, right? So this. No. I, <laughs> I just found out um, by speaking to various people. I mean, directly that are affiliated yeah. with the radio station in Connecticut uh, that plays freestyle on Sunday nights. So this same artist actually got that particular show to play their song. So they spun it on this commercial radio station that plays freestyle on Sunday nights. And to me, it was blasphemous because I'm like, damn, they got that piece of shit to go on the radio. You know what I mean? Uh, oh, wow. But okay. damn. So, sorry. I, I, Tell us how you really feel. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just hold back. Don't hold don't hold back. <laughs> well, it just goes back to something that I was told previously. Like, if you turn on the radio and you're representing new freestyle, and then this is the song that you hear, you're going to be like, damn, freestyle is dead. You know what I mean? But I digress. So the gentleman got the song played, and they played it a few more times throughout the up-and-coming months. Oh, cool. Good for him. Uh, but there's more. So, Oh, God. So then they started playing Edie. Then they started playing other songs that were much, much better, sung by professionals, you know what I mean? And and they really started to embrace playing new freestyle music. Right. So then set artists called the owner of the radio station to complain that it was unfair. Oh, <laughs> wait. This rings a bell. Aha, uh-huh, it does. Same artist, two radio stations. So, um, <sighs> so now there is no playing new school freestyle at that radio station that was opening doors for new school music to be played. Congratulations. Congratulations. We eat our own. Yeah. Good job. Excellent. Wow. I, man, that's what an accomplishment. Yeah. And I know, Um, I know the people that are listening right now are like, who is the artist? I will reveal the artist right after this. Gene. This is Freestyle Club with your hosts, the unknown admin, Rafael Reyes, and CPR, Jose Ortiz. No, no. no. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, let's, let's just say that uh, whoever did this is suffering those consequences. Uh, the, the situation here is that, okay, um, I, I understand that you think you don't have a lot of time on this earth. And I understand that. I got that. And you want to be a hit and you want to get out there. Um, I think that people don't. Okay. I have new stuff that I've got coming out and I'm not going to concentrate on one person. I'm not going to concentrate on one list. I'm not going to concentrate on one website. I'm not going to, because that's not music. That's not the music industry. That's why people go out and abroad and they go out to other countries and they become number one out there. And that's that's music. You go out and you share it with the world, not just a piece of the world, the world. You go out there. Um, If if you don't like what somebody said, you stay away from there. If there's somebody who's attacking you incidentally and trying to ruin your life as a I just won't play their stuff. I just won't talk to them. I'll just leave them alone and stay on my own. It's just that, look, I believe that you can exist within this crazy chaos by just not extending any tentacles and just do what you like. It's important because the more you have in your circle, the more five of them will break out and talk bad about you as soon as you have a bad situation. Yes, I completely and, agree. Do you think that our our bonds are temporary? 
I think a lot of them are temporary. I think a lot of people are using other people for their names. Uh, I think a lot of people are using other people just to get on your countdown. They look at certain names and they go for it. Listen, I don't have a problem with that. But if it doesn't come through, why are you going to ruin set producer or set artist because you thought that it should have been played? If, if it didn't get played, then you just t pick up your shit, go somewhere else. It's right. just that simple. I, I don't I don't I can't fathom the reason. Like, if you don't play my stuff. Why would I call you a jerk off or an that? Say, you know what? He's got his he's got his thing. He's got his the way he needs to do things. And I'm fine with that. He probably didn't like my song. I'll go somewhere else. But I'm not going to ruin my friendship with you. I, I was um I was confronted uh, a few days ago because I put a poll up for people to vote on the top 10 countdown, something that I've been doing forever. And I've been doing on the radio before social media, and I've been doing on social media since I signed up for Facebook because I like to get the feedback of the people who um, listen to our music. And what I want is for the songs to resonate with a listener organically right, i right. want it i okay. want it organically i want it i want people to say i love that song by Alyssa b legendary because i heard it on cpr show and i need to buy it and i want to vote for it because it's amazing and i want them to go to a song organically but now it seems like okay this person put out a song so automatically it has to be number one and it's a hit and that's how it goes and that's it and if you don't do that then you're a hater or you like to divide the genre and i'm like i'm not the only genre that puts artists against each other artists are put against each other on a daily basis every day for every day for people to to vote on so yeah i'm not doing anything different i i just it's, I, it's compared you know I, and i don't mean to cut you off but uh, what I don't like is when artists automatically, whatever, and I'm telling you, we, we are all jealous of our babies, which is our creations and stuff like that. You have to, like, after you've done it and you've, you know, you've jumped up for joy and you think you've got a hit, uh, you have to come back down to reality and say, well, I hope that people like it. I hope that they go ahead and like it. I hope that you know, these people play it on their radio station. I hope that you have to separate yourself and become the record executive and start to wear that hat and understand that, hey, not everybody's going to like your song or your production. Um, it, and it doesn't matter the name that you use to use it, to produce it. If, it, if it's not liked, it's not going to be liked, even if the name is set. Um, in some cases, you know, it does work, but it doesn't. It doesn't always work. Out of every one artist that has a successful, and I'm talking about, I'm talking about Billboard charts here. For every person that hires a producer that has a name that has somebody on the Billboard charts, there's a hundred other artists that don't have hits and don't get to do shows, and they're still fighting just to get up there. And they've used names. They've paid anywhere from twenty-four thousand up, fifty thousand up. To, to get on there, but it didn't work out for them. And, and so, you know, people are, like, upset they, about the fact that they don't get booked for shows either, but I'm like... There I, is no show. Exactly. There's there nothing to no book. Shows. They can't even send Ralph a link to order their material or a link for their Facebook page or their social media page or a link to anything. Ralph, how hard is it for you to get any information to help promote the songs that you do like? It's like pulling teeth. It, I mean, you're going to sell something, then make it available. Like, let's take, like you mentioned, Alex of Latin Nation earlier, right? How long ago did that come out? The CD? Months, uh, yeah, the CD. Months, right? Yes. Yeah. M many months, many months. But yeah. you know what? He's still promoting it, and he's promoting every digital you, download am, space listen, on I the web. Be, Ralph, let me, let me cut you off. And I, I'm telling you this. I'm, I'm going to be, I'm, I want this to be heard. Am I being recorded? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Of course. You're on the Freestyle Club. I need you guys to understand this. And I need all artists to understand this. And I need, I just, there are people who are stepping on their own toes and, and, and chopping down whatever they've created. They create an album or a song or they release something. And in two months, they have a new song to release. And they're they're chop they're cutting off their own noses, and 
what you have in this music industry, in this music world, everything gets done really fast and it gets old really fast. Absolutely right. But I don't think it's necessarily, I don't think necessarily that it's the audience doing that. I think that it's the artists doing that. A lot of artists do something new, it gets out there, two months later, they got a new release. And I'm like, are you serious? You didn't even plan for it. You didn't even think about you know, the artwork. You didn't think about any of that. You're just throwing something out just to be out there to stay relevant. Is that what it is? Because I'm not understanding that. In the, in the world of, of, of music, it takes anywhere from a year to a year and a half to come up with a concept for an album. And you're telling me that you have a new release within two months after you've released your album? Yes, I don't understand that. I, I, I want to off your own nose. I want to praise you because that's exactly what I tell folks. Like I'm trying to promote a song, and people jump on that song quick. They want it to be number one, and then they forget about it immediately. Perfect example: Ricardo Vasquez featuring Cito from Pain. Everybody's yes. like, "Yo, how come this song's not on your countdown? How come you're not giving this song an opportunity? This song is hot. This song is great." So I put it on a poll. It got voted in. The next week. Not a soul, not not one person remember that song. They jumped on something else, and the song was forgotten. It was on the countdown maybe twice, and then it was over. And that's what happens well, now. They, they the, jump the, from song to song to song to song. Is that, the thing is this. Look, um, I, I've got to give it up to uh, my, my brothers and sisters, Edie and, and, and Alex. And I'll tell you why, because I'm a general pain in the ass. And when you come to me and you tell me, well, I've got this new song. My first, my first reaction would be, okay, so this is for the month of May for next year. This is <laughs> it for now. We are now promoting this song, and we're going to ride this out for at least a year. And then we're going to create what's called a concept for next year. And they go with it. And we, we, get, we have a great package. We get, and we and we totally understand that if it gets played, it gets played. If it doesn't get played, that's fine. We don't complain, and we're not well, we're not well, rude about you it. You don't complain. You don't complain. Edie doesn't complain. Alex doesn't complain. But it is kind of scary when you have a compilation of up to twenty yeah. people, and yeah. and there are some people that no matter where they go, no matter where they're featured, and I know that Raphael may have some opinion on this. They always are the cancer to that specific group. Any thoughts, uh, Raphael? Uh, yeah. I don't even want to beat that horse anymore. It's you know not, what? I'm <laughs> You know what? And and I have I have to be I have to uh, sympathize with you guys on that, and I understand that. Um, look, everybody has a song that they think is a hit, and I got that. I understand, and they they may be right. You know who knows? But if you're blinded and you're keeping your sight very zero and saying this is the person I want to play my stuff, and that's it. If he doesn't play it, life is over, and my song is is bad. I'm never going to expose it to anybody else then you're really not in the music business. I have a gentleman in Texas uh, who is immensely successful. And the reason why I say that is because he's paying me off for his next album off the sales from his previous album. I happen to be very proud of that. And the reason why I'm proud of that is because, one, he's not uh, rude like Alex and Edie. Um, and <laughs> and when, I, when I go ahead and I tell him we're going to do this or we're going to do that, we're, we're preparing an album now for his next release, which is going to be in March and April. Everything is done, but we're going over the concept now. Uh, we've got the video going and everything. It's when I say, okay, we're ready to go because I'm the pain in the ass. Because in my day, um, you put out a song, you're out to promote that song for the year. You're not out to like, okay, it's two months, let's go get a new song done, you know, and let's put it out in a month. It makes no sense. You're cutting off your own nose. And that's why and I've been able to um, play uh, Alyssa B's Legendary for eight months, and, and uh, it's, it's resonated with the audience, it's resonated with online folk, because it's one song that I've been playing since December, here we are in August, and it just left, yeah. the, it just left the countdown after eight months. And not only that, but the other uh, shows on my radio station, Black Spectrum Programming, uh, The Urban, they've taken to the song too, so now they're playing it and they're taking yeah. it to another medium they're people the hip-hop crowd the r&b crowd so yeah you, you know yeah. that's what you want you want that crossover potential you want to be able to hit as many people as you can congratulations to her she really sounds fantastic 
the, the thing that I'm enjoying that you're playing Edie, the reason why I'm enjoying that and uh, is because there was a couple of people who told her that she wouldn't be able to make it again and that things wouldn't happen for her or anything like that. And, and this is a cancer survivor, somebody who really fought for life to live and now she's getting a second chance to work hard. But she's getting something on the merits of her hard work, on the merits of her gifted vocals. And she's putting out stuff and it's on your countdown, but she didn't rest on that. She went to other radio stations. There's other radio stations, FM stations playing yes. her too. She did what, uh, what is it, Run DMC did when they were selling their stuff out the back of their car. And it's hard to fathom that because you don't really want fame that badly because you want somebody else to take care of your shit instead of you getting up off your ass. 95% e- of freestyle people, yeah. Edie gets up off her ass. She rented a car to get to you. She did. She does, and she goes, I'm doing this now. I think that it's relevant. I think that it belongs. It's, and she's promoting one song. Yes. She doesn't even, she just, she just got, she was just getting ready to release her for March and April of next year. And she is still a workhorse on these songs. There were people that traveled from Connecticut to Massachusetts to meet her because we had an opportunity to do a meet and greet. And, you know, the fact that she came in person and she had posters and pictures, CDs. I mean, she was ready. She was ready. These are are things that I preach to all the kids. And I say kids because I'm already an old fart. Uh, These are things that I teach the kids when they come in here. um, And I tell them, look, you want fame. It's not going to be by the promise of some guy with a big cigar saying, I'm going to make you a star, kid. You're going to have to get out there and work hard, even if you have somebody behind you. I know people who have been signed to CBS and would go out and sweat bullets selling stuff, selling memorabilia just to be number one, just to get out there. It was hard. And Edie is one of those people. She will get in a car. She will rent it because she thinks... Going to the CPR show, going to this other show, going to another show is important to her career. And so that's an artist that works hard for what she wants. Not only just gifted, but she learned the other side of it is that you don't have to wait for somebody to make you a star. You can do it yourself and get out there and be relevant. Ralph, you've heard the side of the producer, the artist, and and the radio station. You, do you have any thoughts on, on this subject? Right. For me... You know, like I, I was trying to allude to earlier with uh, Alex, is you know, here's a guy that has the album out, and it was out many, many months ago. But yeah, you, you still see him promoting it. He even created, you know, new flyers so everyone knows where they can get it. I mean, how many times have I told you CPR? I didn't know that was out. I, when did that come out? Or who did that? When did they put that out? Because I, I don't see it. All I see is people go up to these Facebook groups. Whatever you post is gone in, in 10 minutes, 15 minutes, because of all the stuff that's being posted in those groups. The reason why I'm one of his partners, and I am not partnered with anybody. I don't trust anybody. It's okay to do that in this business because sooner or later, everybody gets in a group and somebody wants to be the star and just use everything for stepping stones. So I don't trust anybody. But Alex, I trust, and I have a deep trust for him. And the reason why I trust him is because he's doing exactly what you just said. He's making that relevant for the year so that next year he can have something new to explode with. Well, there's enough tracks in there. There's a 20 certain track to promote. I think that he's a smart individual, and he's still you know, promoting his stuff. He's still doing it. He, he made, it, uh, made it so accessible that there is no excuse for you to say, I didn't know this was an out. You know, this was yeah. out. Exactly. I mean, and and a lot of stuff that I get behind the scenes is people saying, oh, how is that guy getting booked or how is he getting these sales? And and the answer is simple. He's not sitting at home waiting for the phone to ring. He's out there making it ring, right? Yes, you just hit it on the nose. You just hit it on the nose. No, it's true. Jose, how many times have we heard behind the scenes, oh, that guy's garbage, bro. How, 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 How are people booking him? Well, and, and that, um, that that's happened. Look look at what's happened with some of the and, members of the again, menagerie. We're not just talking specifically about one person. We're talking about them saying it about other people. Yes. So, you right, know, right, 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 right. When it comes to the... Spoke about Alex as an example, but I don't want people thinking that it's directed at him. This is directed <laughs> at... Oh, yeah, I want to be clear, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. I understand. It's important. Right? It's said about many people. We've heard well, this guy... over a decade, right? Ten years at least now, yes, Jose, right? at least, at least, yes. Well, here's, here's the deal. We hear about, we hear about, and it all has to boil down to jealousy, and it all has to boil down with, 
you're waiting for somebody to be your knight in shining armor. And guess what? In the real world, if you're waiting for that, then you're just waiting to be screwed and and taken advantage of because that's what you're doing. You're exposing your wallet on your back pocket. The thing is here with Alex and with whatever Edie does and with whatever uh, Ruben does, uh, Wicked One out in Texas, um, we have proof of sales. We have proof of promotional material. We have proof of all of that. And the reason why we have proof is not to show you guys that. It's to show that we can go ahead and fund our next project next year. Yes. That's not to show to anybody that we're the shit. It's to show that we can have money for next year. We don't have to think about it or worry about it because it's been funded by their own legs. They got off their asses. They got they rented a car. They went out and did something. They made the people who are relevant to hear it to hear it and to make it accessible. And they went out and sold CDs out of, you know, I gotta be honest with you, this guy from Texas, amazing. His job makes him fly every, every day of the week. He flies every day of the week. And do you know what he does? He carries with him his music in his phone and he carries his CDs and he carries posters. And so what he does is, I swear, it, I swear to everything I love, this is the truth. Your mother get him fired, off, but go ahead. He, he takes off his headphones and he places it on the person next to him in the seat. And he says, hey, you want to hear this? And the person hears it. And he goes, hey, that's really nice. And he says, who's this? He goes, that's me. He goes, hey, what, this is really nice. Where can I get it? I have the CD on me now. He sold three units doing that. That's a consummate salesperson. He didn't need... You know, to worry about any circles or anything like that, because I told him, look, the more circle you have, the more you become closed in. You have to get out of there and do what you have to do to make sales. I'm talking about sales. I'm not talking about you being popular. I'm not talking about you being the best. I'm talking about you making money so that that way you can fund your next project. If something happens and it gets out there and it becomes number one and all this other shit, we will take that and we will take it with gratitude and humbleness. But then the next year, you have to get back out there on your ass again and believe in yourself. And that's exactly what he's been doing. Three units all alone in the airport with a pair of headphones. And that's commendable. And that's why he received the Artie Rodriguez newbie spot on CPR's right. Top 10 <laughs> Countdown. Oh, my. Look at that. Yeah, he honestly, he did. Edie's doing fantastic with her sales. And Alex I didn't, is, not Alex to, is to, a bulldog. To add Alex to that, to add to the wicked one, I didn't play his music. I didn't, I didn't think it fit my show. But at, yeah. the, at the end of the year, I made sure that I gave him his due because I saw the promotion, I saw what he was doing, and you have to give people credit for becoming their own brand without the radio station. That's why it's called well, the what, what, Artie what Rodriguez yeah. newbie spot because of the fact that <laughs> they take your advice. They take your advice and they put it to work and they don't and they're they don't not rude. One yeah. of, one of the things that I really hate is being rude to anyone just because of your own personal uh, agenda. It makes no sense. Let me ask you something I very important yeah. already to cut you off cuz I I, I want to ask this yeah. before the episode is over. Are you getting rid of the cancer in the group like for example, people that were part of the menagerie, the ones yeah. that cost uh, some of the artists to be played at certain radio stations or the ones that became a cancer to the group? Are you are you still going to work with them? Are you still giving them opportunity or are you done with them? No, that's that's a that's a that's a done issue because now we're zeroing down on where we're going to go. And that's a, that's a conversation that we've already had uh, at the very beginning. And we've been very fair. Whenever another artist can promote another artist, it says something about that artist's character. He really does care about what he's put on this compilation. Benny Gonzalez he, is a prime example. I know, Benny's crazy. But I'm talking about Alex. He has his own album and he has his own things and yet he's, he's promoting other artists. Unheard of. Yeah. Unheard of. No artist promotes another artist unless they're really buddy buddy. And right. I gotta give it to Alex. His his ego was you know, he, he took his ego aside and he said, you know what, I'm gonna promote these guys. Hopefully they'll get a chance, they'll remember us or whatever. But now that's enough. That's it. Uh Ari, I'm curious uh about something. With I'm with married. the uh, yeah, well. <laughs> 
I mean, we could talk about that after the show. But, um, <laughs> with, with, the, with the big influx of these freestyle uh, FB live shows, right? And, and, and you know, Frankie Cutler's getting back in it and Lizette making noise and, and the Santana twins making noise. Have you seen like, a, like an influx or a growth or, a, a, you know, an increase in the demand for your services for new freestyle tracks or bookings or, or, or more productions compared to like previous years? Okay, it's the same. Um, it's the same, really? Look, I'm going to be honest with you. Um, I always drum up business. There are, there are my there are my days as I, I I'm going to refer to a biblical thing here. Just, there are seven years with the fatty cows, and then there are seven years of the skinny cows. <laughs> and whenever that happens, and I'm I'm drudging for for work. I, I'm I'm being as honest as I can, but. Just because somebody did something doesn't mean that it affects the industry. What happens is that if they get out there and they want to do what they got to do, kudos to them. It, it doesn't bother me at all. But what I'm concerned about is the people who I teach and I, and I show them. I said, look, if you're going to worry about names, if you're going to worry about circles and you're going to be in a popularity contest, please don't hire me. If you're ready to do something that is significant to you and it works for you and you're happy for it, then work with me. But other than that, the, mu the music industry has not changed. It's, it, at Freestyle, as a matter of fact, the only people who are really benefiting, if anything, are the people who actually open the doors for this. We're talking about the Coros. We're talking about, you know, Judy Torres's. And, and those people deserve that light. They worked hard. For those who get top 10 and then they're demanding $15,000 for a show, that kills it. That just shows it the absolutely, It absolutely does, because I tell them time in and time out. Two things. It doesn't matter when you land on CPR's Top 10 Countdown, you're being played on a Top 10 Countdown. So if you're number right. 10... exactly. And you're exactly. played... If you're number 10 and I play you for 10 weeks, it doesn't matter. You were played for 10 weeks. It's better yes. than being number 11 and not being on the countdown at all, right? Well, one of the yeah, one of the things that I really push for and I, I, I research for in other radio stations as well is rotation. We look for rotations as well because with rotation, that means that it's on uh, indefinitely and at least it gets a lot more further. So to be what I'm trying to relate to this is if you're number 10 and you're played for eight months, shut the hell up. Stay there. Get the play. That's the important part, it, you know, to get played. If you get number one, you know, praise God, you know, enjoy it, love it, is up. But just try to pray that it stays on there longer than three weeks. <laughs> exactly. Just get, just get the play. That's the important part is the play. But they don't so, understand that part. They don't understand that getting the play is the important part. And I'm not responsible to make you money. Just no, like just like the artist no. is not responsible to make me money. I, I remember posting something and you actually thought that I was saying that the top ten countdown well, you were asking me that the top ten countdown doesn't count. And actually what I was saying was, you guys have to stop thinking that anybody else is responsible for your sales. If you don't get on the top 10 countdown, it doesn't matter. You have to get out there and you have to sell. I have a gentleman who sold three units without radio play. So do the math. If you're on there and you're getting played at number 10, shut the hell up. <laughs> Just let it play. That's why one of the things I've heard uh, from one producer is that, you know, he had a couple of artists, he produced their songs, and now they're sitting around the studio saying, oh, so when are we going to get booked? And he's like, what? <laughs> you know, <I> just... <laughs> you know? Why don't you commit a crime? You'll get booked really quick. Uh, listen, yeah, I, you know. I, if I, for anybody out there who's listening, I have hosting shows that I get paid for. And then there are shows that I get paid for when I go out with legit. I do not move from this house unless I am getting paid. It's just that simple. So for me, shows are very little and minute because I don't want to do free shows all the time. I don't want to become part of the furniture. But what I do <laughs> say is this. If you think that by doing shows you're going to be famous, that's not the only venue. You really have to carry a pair of headphones and start letting people hear your stuff and selling your stuff one at a time. 
Yes, and that's exactly what Edie did when she came here a few weeks ago, and she met with six people that came to the station to meet with her, talk to her, to spend time with her. I mean, we even had a person call in to give her a blessing over the phone. Like, Amen. And so, yeah. and so these are things that was done organically. Those people organically, whether it be six, 12, or 12 million, they organically wanted to be part of Edie's moment. They organically... Oh, yeah. Yeah. Wanted, wanted her to be number one. They organically wanted, be, wanted to meet her, talk to her, and get her autograph. And that's what I want. I want organic moments, not pushed moments, not uh, moments that the person's number one because he's your buddy. You have to really talk to my friends, people like Willie Valentine, Angel Mena, and people that are close to me where they get the hardest time trying to push the material on my show. People think that they yeah. get it easy. They get it the hardest because I critique them to the point where they go back and they scrap their, their project and start all over again. As a matter of fact, you know, to, to share a funny story, K7 from TKA called me and he showed me a song and he's like, what do you think? And I and this is what I said to him. I said, are you going for a Christmas vibe? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I told him. I said, are you going for a Christmas vibe? And he hung up the phone. That's it. And and he went and he changed the song completely. And he did a totally different production. And so these are the types of feedbacks that I give people, but not many can handle my feedback. And that's why 20 years have gone by and the same people that have been sharing the same stories about me for 20 years keep sharing them because they got nothing better else to do than think that I haven't grown in the last 20 years. And that, you know, before, yes, I was brutal. And, oh, you were an animal. And, oh. and but... <laughs> I was brutal. I was brutal to Artie. I was brutal to Legit. I was brutal to everyone. But I try to curb myself now. I try to listen to everything, even the the worst songs, even the stuff with Planet Rock beat. I, you know what I mean? Oh God, I uh, hate Planet Rock. Oh my oh, God. Oh, thank you, thank you. Now you can join my club. <laughs> yeah. I, I can't stand everything with Planet Rock. Anyway, but, that's, you know what? that's just me. There's some that are really hot, though. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, you know, down those, but. Everything with a planet rock, be really seriously. At least create your own planet rock. I have Artie Rock. Yeah, I but, do my you know, own. I do my own thing. <laughs> that, that's a, that's a perfect point to to pivot this. I mean, we talked a lot about from the artist perspective, but you know, you're a unique person because you've worn both hats, the artist and the producer. So I want to talk a little bit more about producing, and, and if you have any tidbits for up and coming producers, what would they be? I mean, besides not coming up with a planet rock beat. <laughs> I just spit on my drink, thanks. <laughs> One of the things that a lot of uh, I, I'm liking the new producers only because they're they they are not attached to all the crap yet, to all the all the ego crap. Uh, uh, I and I'm I'm including myself in there, by the way, because when I point, I have three fingers pointing at me. So I believe in that. But what I do like about them is that. They're not attached to anything. And so whatever they're coming up with in their head sounds so good. And I, I try to teach, to teach them to stay in that realm, to stay fresh, to stay crazy, try new sounds, do different things. Be the guy that people copy. Don't be the guy who copies other people. Awesome. Yeah, I love the way I love the way people just the new kids have this new way of doing things because and I'm talking about. R&B and hip hop and freestyle and dance music and house music. Uh, I'm an OG. I do things the way I feel them. I'm already embedded in my own my own ways, and I've got that. I tried new things, which I'm really happy in the hip hop genre. As a matter of fact, I'm known as Artie Fingers. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is that the thing is that um, I like who they are, and so I try not to change anything. But I do tell them keep it business, be polite. And always, always understand that p other people may have ideas that can teach you even more. So be open minded, you know, but um, be who you are, because you I, I can't be Willie Valentine. I can't. There's no way I can be Willie Valentine. And yet I produced a song for him and he came in as an artist, not as a producer. And we came up with a really beautiful song. And the thing is that he allowed me to be me and I allowed him to be him. And that's called mutual respect. If we can keep that, then we're okay. And but that, that, that song that you produce, uh, How I Love Thee, for a long period of time, people were using that as their wedding song. Because, yeah, I heard. I because heard, of yes. the fact, and, that was, and here in, in New England, three couples that I know of use that as their wedding song because of the wedding bells in the beginning of the song and how the words that you wrote 
on behalf of Willie to Cynthia Figueroa uh, yeah. just resonated yeah. with them as as a couple and it's great how those moments is important to me that's the organic portion of well, that's the you getting you know, people yeah. attached to your music and to you as an artist it's important look I have I have a person who came here and he was just starting out in production one of the best vocals in in my opinion is an amazing individual and he brought in some music and I actually wrote the song right in front of him um, and we came out with lies and the thing is that when I did that he gave me the opportunity to rebuild the drums and he did all the keyboard work and then he came in and he gave me that sultry god-given vocal angel mena so for me when I hear lies I hear the culmination of respect and understanding on both levels. And so if we can do that, if we can at least respect each other and understand, hey, he's got a special gift. Let me shut the fuck up and let him do his thing. It may just work. We may just be able to save a genre, but everybody's in their own little corners. Yeah, that's my question. I was about to say, why do you think that we don't see any more uh, more collaboration between these artists? Egos. Is it just the ego? Yeah, egos. Just point by yeah, egos. 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 I listen. Let me put it this way. I just saw a thing where, and I'm going back in time. Jerry Lewis was uh, interviewing Bob Hope, and, and Bob Hope is sitting in the chair squirming, and 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 because he doesn't like Jerry Lewis very much, but he has to be a professional, and they're throwing each other daggers, and you can tell that from that moment on, those two could not work together. And so it happens the same way in, in music freestyle. There's people in freestyle, any genre, any genre. Um, everybody is the answer to their genre. All of a sudden, you have people who are the best in their genre. And you know what? This is how I play it. You want to be the best. You want to be number one. Go for it. Just leave me alone. I suck. Don't worry <laughs> about it. Leave me alone. Don't call me. Don't tell me how great you're doing. I will just pray that everything goes well for you and your family. But leave me out of the battle of you being the best because I'm just going to give it to you. You're the best. Leave me alone. I just want to make money. And that's the speech that he gave me when he talked about my top 10 countdown. Thank you, Artie. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I really don't care for that. I, it's all ego. Um, it, that's all it is. And it just it just And it's fine to have an ego because you have to be that way to survive in this business. It is. It's a competition. But you don't have to take it to the point where you have to hate someone. One thing that gets me the most is the fact that when you know someone so personal and how easy with, with a snap of your fingers, they can just turn on you like a bad professional wrestling angle. You know what I mean? They hit you with a chair in the back of the head. You never see it coming. Oh, yeah. You know, and, yeah. and to I me, that. and to me, what I always tell those people, and I hope that they're listening because I, I like to remind them of this. Don't, <laughs> and, oh, boy. Don't worry. No, this is from my heart. Yes. Don't worry about what I didn't do for you in freestyle. Don't worry about what I didn't do for you musically. If I told you that you sucked and I talked about your music, I understand that you're upset because you're not you're not a good singer or I feel that you're not a good singer. But put that aside for a second and think about the personal stuff that I've done. You know what I mean? And it's not that I want to throw it in your face. The personal stuff that you do for someone, that's what matters. That's what you should judge a person on. Not this bullshit. Not this freestyle crap. Hey, do you remember, you know, the things that I did for you personally when you were struggling, when you needed assistance, when you needed help? You know, and I'm not, I'm not trying to throw indirects at one specific person because it's happened to me various times. It just happened to me recently. What I'm saying is talk about the things that I did for you personally, how I showed up personally for you. Don't worry right. about don't worry about CPR didn't play me on the top ten countdown. Fuck right. fuck that. That's bullshit. That's right, just right. that's just it's not even worth talking about. Let's talk about what CPR did for you personally. I can't fathom me losing your friendship. And I've always said to everybody, I love that man like family. He's a cutie. I just want to put him in my back pocket. I I, I would never allow... And that will have to be one big pocket. Yeah, hell yeah. But the thing is that if I see somebody trying to attack me and trying to get me into a situation where they're trying to get me to argue with them, I usually just hang up the phone, cut them off, because what they're going to do is they're going to ruin all the good memories that I have with them. Yes. And I stop it. I stop it. 
I just stay out of contact and I just pray for them and I hope that everything goes well in their lives. And that's happened I'm to not, you. That's happened to you many times because we've had conversations and I know that <laughs> you wouldn't. I know that you wouldn't come out of you know out of school and talk about those things because you're an honorable person. You can if you want to. I know three. Yeah. They have come out their face when you have pretty much given them their start, you know, or yeah. you've helped yeah. them, um, yeah. you know, tune tune their sound or help their artists or whatever the case may be. And they've just shitted on you, whether it be behind your back or in person. The situation here is to see I have proof. It's not like I'm doing this just to be, you know, uh, uh, angry or just to hate you because I don't hate anybody. I really don't. There's some people who are on the hate you know, hotline, but I, I, I can't hate anyone. I, I can't. I can't do that. I don't want to go to my grave that way. But what I do is I just say, you know what? I think that our moment on this earth has happened and you're just about to ruin it. So I'm going to cut you off yes. and I'm going to remember all the good times. And that's how I am. I'm sorry, but that's exactly how I am because you're going to ruin it. You're going to take me to a place where I haven't been for in years since I was a kid. I don't need to go there. So for me, I just go forward. I just go forward. I have people that come in here. I teach them. I respect. I've had people who have won Grammy Awards walk into the shitty apartment to work with me. I've had people who have done uh, major plays on Broadway to work with me here, to work here in this little shitty apartment. And I've shown the beginner just as much as respect as I've shown them. And, and that's all we could ask for, you know, and that's all that we can provide. And for me, you know, like I've put up with a lot of stuff from people, you know, behind the scenes is the worst thing that you can deal with when it comes to our music because behind the scenes, <laughs> see, because everybody on social media, they project themselves as victims or, or, or they try to make it seem like, you know, son santitos, you know, and stuff like that. But we know better, you know, Yeah. but, yeah, but, yeah. but the bottom line is this, you know, think about what I said said worry about what a person did for you personally don't worry about the professional part unless that's all you're focused on and then we can't do nothing for you you know try to try to circle back to that and i think that there'll be a little more respect in our genre of music there's there was a gentleman that always every every uh every holiday that comes to mind um somebody that you referred to me uh, and i still remember him to this day because i, I still play his song jv and angel uh, one of the things that I, 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 I take away from that is somebody who said, CPR told me to go to you and uh, he told me to work with you. And so here I am. I'm going to go to you and we're going to work. And he sweated in my in my booth, <laughs> getting things ready and done. And he finally got you to play him. Yes. But not only that, he went out and he he went out and he started to do other things as well, because he finally accomplished the one thing that you've been telling him to do get better just i think you could do better go here go there try this try that i just remember yeah. the fact that I, for a long time he was the only artist that actually listened to the advice yes. that i gave him instead of being so combative and um exactly. when he came exactly. back when he came back to my radio show with tell me why which we'll play right now because you know we have the magic podcast right now and we can play music right now <laughs> <laughs> and away we go. I've lost the star that was my guiding light, leaving me lonely without your love. I don't know what I'm gonna do. Tell me, tell me why. Tell me why you my love. my heart this way. Why do you have to wait so long just to let me go? Just to leave me. Listening to Javian Angels tell me why and, and remembering when he first came to 
the radio station to show me this song that he had done with you. And this is before social media. This is back in the day. Um, right. And yeah, he was so right. he was so proud. And I booked him that year for the Puerto Rican Festival. And that's right. And there he that's was right. up there with those two thick. 300 pound women uh, which, and I was proud of him I yes was they were <laughs> and, and he and you know he had a heart murmur he had a heart monitor Artie almost killed him in, in his sweat box <laughs> um I remember you telling me and him telling me that you you worked him his vocals and then you just kept on going do it better do it harder and, and he just he, and then and then he just ripped off his shirt and then you saw that he was just he hit the note and he was exhausted and you saw this little pouch next to him and you're like those are out of style why is he why does he have those pouches you know <laughs> fanny packs oh my the, god he had a fanny pack and it wasn't a fanny pack it was actually his his it heart a, his heart monitor his heart machine was wow. there his heart machine was there his uh yeah he, he had a pacemaker <laughs> Yeah, and he came out. He says, "You're gonna kill me." And I'm like, "But you didn't tell me you had one of those. I would have left the door open." And uh, listen, it it just goes to show that look, you know, you have the you have the people who understand what they want and what they need, and they say, "Okay, you know what? I'm gonna play on your own field. I'm gonna play your your advice. I'm gonna do this." And if it turns out well, then I'm the better for it. And he was one of those people. Uh, very, he wasn't disrespectful. I know that he kept questioning, why didn't you play my stuff? Why didn't you play my stuff? But I don't think he ever combated you. He never really, nope. you know, threw, threw daggers at you. No, no. And, 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 at and the, in the end, when he got the final product, he realized that, damn, this is a song that I should have had all along. I, I'm talented, which is what I told him, but he needed the right producer, the right song, where he was just getting his friends to do his music for him, and they would tell him that he was great. And, well, Benny you know, was the same thing. Benny was the same thing. Benny, Benny Gonzalez. Ben, yeah, Benny Gonzalez was the same thing. Came in, he sweated up a storm. I've never, but, seen, I've never seen a man that size do a split, and I saw that recently at a yeah. show. Yes, he, he did. He did everything he had to do. He did everything that he had to do. Uh, he took your advice, went for it, and he couldn't figure out what took him so long to work here. <laughs> We're gonna wrap up this topic, and um... no, I wanted. Oh, I wanted to talk about all the other stuff. <laughs> well, we have to have you back on then, Artie. Do you want to talk about that story, uh, the Walmart one? Oh my God! Can we? I... Yeah, I went. Okay, Ralph, are you ready? For no, this? no. Can I say it? Can I do it? Can I do it? Wait, wait. Let him tell the story. He's the guest. All right, all right. So let's let's do it this way. I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you how it resulted, and then he's gonna tell you the end result because hey. what he saw the end result. Do I start or you start? No, he I starts. Start. He so starts. For, for years, I didn't want to tell the story. So here it goes. I I needed to use the restroom really badly. We were in a big shopping mall out there in Massachusetts, Walmart. Uh, so I went on ahead. Thanks a lot. Why don't we tell the cops where I live? <laughs> so. <laughs> so I, I, I go into the I, I I need the bathroom really badly. So the signs are way above me. I'm a short little guy. I'm like I'm five foot four, so I'm really tiny. And I didn't see the signs. I don't see the signs. But I was in such a hurry to use the restroom that it was it was an emergency. Let's just say it that way. So I went in, opened the door, sat down, and I am in I'm I'm in Aruba. <laughs> just feeling so good that everything that every all my thoughts were coming out so um, just the so thoughts I, just the thoughts just the thoughts so uh here i am in the lap of luxury by the way because the bathroom was really pretty so i'm sitting down and i'm going for it and i finally i'm almost done uh, thinking about that aruba trip and then i look down and i'm noticing that there's a guy peeing but he had some very pretty sandals. Ugh. And then as I looked up, I noticed all the floral arrangements and all the wallpaper was so pretty that I was like, this is kind of too pretty for a men's bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm trying to figure out why the man next to me with the pretty sandals is peeing so long and sitting down. And I'm like... <laughs> I was like, oh, no, please don't tell me that I'm in the women's oh bathroom. My God. <laughs> I finish up. Uh, I've never used toilet paper that fast. I opened the door. There's a girl sitting outside on the thing. She went, oh, and I went, oh, and I ran out. <laughs> and I said, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I didn't know I was in the I'm not, I'm, I left and I ran. Have you ever seen? See, have you ever seen? See, a, this, is, this is where you caught me. Have you ever seen a child get scolded? 
so when we go in there, I tell Artie the bathroom is to the left, and but he need, I didn't tell him which left, right? So we Thanks go. Thanks a lot. I appreciate that. You're, you're welcome. We, we go to the blue. <laughs> And we, go, we go to the Blu-ray section, and I'm there, and I'm, yo, what's going on with Artie? And legit's like, see, see, we got to go. I'm like, but I'm trying to buy a Blu-ray movie. See, we got to go. And, you know, you don't understand, but when, <laughs> when, legit, when legit has a serious face, you tend to listen to legit. <laughs> <laughs> so we get outside, and Artie is hiding like a little boy behind <laughs> behind. The truck that uh, legit uh, drives, and he's hiding behind the window, right? The the driver's side window, right? Behind it, and he is soaking wet, white, pale, whiter than he is now. I, I was so embarrassed. And he was oh, like, God. he's like, we got to get out of here. We got to go. <laughs> I'm going to go. I'm, I'm about to get arrested if we don't move. I, I feel so bad. I was so embarrassed. And I was like, this is too pretty to be the men's bathroom. <laughs> I mean, I was enjoying myself, and it smelled good in there. I was like, the girl, <laughs> it was fresh smelling. It was pine. It was really nice. And none of those things set off red flags in your head. No, right? you, know what it, you know what it was? I was, so, I was so concentrating on that trip to Aruba to let everything go <laughs> that after I opened the door, I was like, I noticed all the pinks and the floral arrangements. <laughs> And I didn't even get to wash my hands. Oh, ah. damn it. This is the Freestyle Club. Pick hit of the week. One person that comes to mind who has sweated his life away. We're talking about uh, Ruben Gonzalez, all, all the way from Texas. One of the songs, the first songs that we did a video to. An amazing individual. Wicked one. Oh. By the look in your eyes. By the look in your eyes, oh. Do you have a pick of the week? Absolutely, man. This week, I've, I heard this track on um, Tim Spinney's Schumer show, and I said I gotta, I gotta put it out there. It's not released, but it's Alicia B's "Memories of Love." When you guys hear nice. this, nice. you're gonna do backflips, all kinds of, uh, all kinds of shit. Let me tell you, when you hear this, let's just say you won't use the girls' bathroom. You won't be, you, you'll be using the girls' bathroom. <laughs> <that good. laughs> Pick Hit of the Week this week features a young lady who is making her debut. She's 11 years old, and her name is Alexia. Uh, pro- Alexia! Produced by Artie Rodriguez himself, and uh, remixes by Jay Allens, and the song is called Starlight. This young lady is not only the biggest CPR's Clubhouse fan, she's been listening to my show even before she decided that she wanted yes, to do a song. Right. It goes to that generational push, because she's the daughter of Canadian freestyle artist, Vicky. And so that's right. 
it's funny how things work out in this world where we refer people, producers, and to other artists. So I had the honor of um, having a conversation with Vicky, and I point to her in the direction of Mr. Artie Rodriguez. And so That's Artie right. produced a few of her tracks, but then she had the idea of having her daughter record a song for the first time. And um, we got to debut that song on CPR's Clubhouse this week, and she was our very special guest, so I got to interview her first and play her song first as well she's amazing 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 heart oh my god she's amazing she's a great kid so congratulations going out to all the pick hits of the week we got the wicked one by the look in your eyes we got Alyssa b's memories of love and of course alexia 11 year old freestyle singer with starlight For the Unknown Admin, where can they find you? Uh, you can find me at theunknownadmin.com and wherever finer pork rinds are sold. <laughs> Artie Rodriguez, where can they find you, sir? In the women's bathroom at Macy's. <laughs> anyway, uh, Artie Productions on Facebook, wherever fine garments are sold and wherever BBWs are posing. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> And my name is Jose Ortiz, hashtag CPR, and you can find me at CPRSmusic.com. And until next time, this is the Freestyle Club. Subscribe to the Freestyle Club podcast, theunknownadmin.com, and CPRSmusic.com. Go, 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 go.